Jean-Marc Leclerc, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. This uh, $15 billion investment is the largest ever made by Honda in North America. You could have put the facility anywhere. You could have put it in the U.S. Why did a Honda choose Canada? Well, Canada has so many things going for it in terms of the, uh, the EV ecosystem that we're looking for, uh, from raw materials to skilled labor to clean energy. Uh, to also governments that want to collaborate uh, to support such investments. Those were all considerations for us to, uh, uh, you know, to choose Canada and put it at the top of the list. It, it was just a few months ago that Prime Minister Trudeau was suggesting that Canada couldn't actually afford to keep uh, giving out money to land EV deals mm. beyond the, the Volkswagen deal and the Stellantis deal. I wonder when you, when you heard him say that, <laughs> what you thought, and, and what you think changed? Well, honestly, when we heard that, we were, uh, you know, we had been talking to the government for a number of months before that uh, that came out. Obviously, we were concerned, uh, but we persisted in discussing with the government. And what we've learned is that they wanted to transition that support to an investment tax credit. Right. And so we've, uh, you know, tried to understand what that meant relative to uh, what it was under the Strategic uh, Innovation Fund. And uh, we saw our way clear to, uh, based on what they were offering to, uh, again, to come to Canada with that support. So, so you, you didn't get the production subsidies like the other two companies did you? As you said, you got this tax credit. Did, would a production subsidy have been That's preferable? Or, or do you still see an advantage to the, to the tax credit? Well, the tax credit is, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's guaranteed. Uh, the um, uh, sort of the, the, the competition to the IRA uh, yeah. is not guaranteed in that it, it's, it's tied to production. And, uh, and again, if things change in the United States uh, relative to that direction of the IRA, uh, again, there's no guarantee that uh, manufacturers who have benefited from them here will continue to get yeah. those subsidies. So the, so, so the ITC is, is a guaranteed uh, guaranteed support for us. Okay, that, that's interesting. Um, Quebec obviously was in the bidding mm -hmm. for um, a material plant in Bégancourt. Uh, you decided yeah. not to go that route. Um, and in fact, Quebec has mm -hmm. talked about how they were kind of disappointed with Honda. W why did you choose Ontario mm -hmm. and not other places? Well, you know, one of the priorities for us, uh, you know, going back to the, the uh, I would say, the affordability issue relative to uh, EVs, yeah. one of the primary focus for us was to try to do everything we could uh, to reduce those costs. So part of that is also logistics. And uh, when you can build the components to build batteries closer to the plant, uh, there's cost savings tied to that. And that was a primary focus of ours. Uh, of course, Quebec offered many good things for us. Uh, the negotiations uh, were uh, going very well, but in the final analysis, uh, the proximity to the plant really uh, became uh, the dominant factor for us uh, to, uh, to move forward with, with what we call our phase one. Obviously, there, there's some taxpayer money involved in this, as, as we've talked about. Um, and I'm sure you know that, that not everyone agrees with that idea. The con federal conservatives, for instance, yeah. have, have expressed concerns around that, that the jobs aren't with the cost to taxpayers. Um, first of all, what, what, what would you say to people who believe, like yourself, I guess, that this is an investment? Yeah, I, I think, well, well, there's two things going on. There's no doubt there's, there's financial pressures on Canadians at this time. These types of investments are, I would say, generational opportunities. Um, and it's really about securing the economy, growing the economy for the future, for future generations, because $15 billion is not something that uh, is going to have uh, an impact for the next five years, but, but really for decades to come. Now, sometimes it's difficult because of the current circumstances for people to sort of understand the importance of that. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, that's the way I would probably characterize uh, the, the importance of moving forward and, and seeing this as a positive uh, for Canada, for the uh, Canadian economy and for Canadians overall, even though it may not be. Uh, at first a glance, a, a positive thing, given the current uh, situation. W would you be concerned that a change in government might lead to an end to the tax credit and, and possibly put in jeopardy the project? Well, there, there's nothing guaranteed uh, in life. Obviously, uh, things can change. Uh, we hope uh, certainly that they don't. Um, 
you know, it, it's a major commitment for companies to move uh, forward with such, uh, you know, the, the scale of the plans that we're uh, looking to implement in Canada. Um, but certainly we understand the risk is always there. We, we, we hope we don't have to, uh, to face up to it. There's always contingencies. Um, you know, I, I think right now with the industry, with what's going on, uh, or what could go on south of the border, a change of government, um, consumer adoption may be continuing to slow down. Obviously, there needs to be flexibility built in which we have considered in our plans. Mm. You, you already employ, I think, 4,200 workers in, in Alliston, Ontario. I know that Minister Champagne was asked yeah. whether there have been any guarantees around temporary foreign workers and jobs for Canadians. Uh, has any of that been written into to the deal? No, but what, what we have done... Uh, Listen, our, our uh, objective is to optimize Canadian jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, although we understand what happened with other manufacturers, one of the things we were very uh, aware of is uh, what, what went on there. Yep. And again, I don't have all the details, but for sure this is not something that we want to entertain. Uh, one thing that I've done is I've reached out to the uh, Canadian Building uh, Trade Union uh, Executive Director, Sean Strickland, to have a conversation and discuss a memorandum of understanding so that we can move forward together mm -hmm. and you know the interest for us is to meet the you know the timelines of the construction and uh, I think with communication directly with them and making sure that Canadians have these constructions job that's what we can do at the moment to uh, make sure that uh, you know, we, we fulfill that objective. Obviously, you, this is the world you live in. This is a huge amount of money. But for people that, that don't really get it, how, how big a deal is this, Monsieur Leclerc? Uh, it, it is uh, unprecedented, certainly, uh, for Honda. Uh, it's the biggest um, uh, automotive deal, I, I would say, investment, certainly in Canadian history. Uh, arguably, uh, the, the largest one for Honda uh, globally. Uh, that's how significant it is. It's really a vote of confidence in Canada playing a significant role in that transition to electrification uh, that we're benefiting from here. President and CEO of Honda Canada, Mr. Leclerc, thank you so much. I appreciate your time, sir. Thank you. I ask Ontario's Minister of Economic Development, Vic Fideli, about the politics behind the deal. Minister Fideli, nice of you to make the time. Thank you very much, Rosemary. So your government is, uh, along with the federal government, supporting this deal uh, with direct and indirect incentives. Uh, your government, $2.5 billion worth. What, do you, what is your message to taxpayers, because obviously this is, is their money, about why it is important to invest this much in this particular deal? Yeah, back in 2019, Reuters announced that there'd be $300 billion spent in the EV supply chain and zero was coming to Canada. And we looked into why and felt that we really needed to be there to save the 100,000 auto workers in Ontario. And we began uh, making investments. It was a solid business decision that we made. And this is the business we chose to be in. It, it will result in, I think, a thousand jobs in, in Alliston, Ontario, and, and maybe more. Um, I, I guess some people would, ex would have expected more jobs given the amount of money that you're investing and given the total amount that Honda is putting on the table. So there's quite a few more jobs. Okay. The Honda announcement, Honda is investing $15 billion, but it's for four plants. They announced the two plants yesterday, the battery plant and the vehicle plant in yeah. Alliston, right. that'll retain 4,200 jobs and add 1,000. They're also opening in that $15 billion, and with our uh, incentives as well, two more plants in Ontario. One is a uh, major plant, it makes a cathode, and it's in a city that will be announced shortly. The other is, again, another major investment uh, in a plant that will make a separator, and that's a major investment. Now, now that separator company is Japanese, and they were on yeah. the stock exchange, and, and they re re released their numbers yesterday. Their investment is 180 billion yen, which is about $1.6 billion, and that yet to be named community in Ontario. Those and, and, communities yeah. are ready to go, and we'll be announcing where those communities are in the in the community to give the excitement there. But there's significant, right. significant jobs coming with those. So are we talking hundreds or thousands, just so I can get a sense? Um, significant, which would be more than a thousand. Okay. Okay. Good to know. Uh, Honda, as and, you and, know, and, is the... in billions and, and billions, by the and, way, in each okay. of those communities. 
Okay. Honda, as you know, is, is the first automaker to utilize the federal government's EV supply chain uh, tax credit. Um, other deals were done with subsidies. I, I wonder what you think of this approach, whether you think that this is um, offers more stability for this particular deal and what it was like to work with the federal government on this. Well, uh, we've been working with Honda on this deal for two years. Yeah. Um, we, we feel that from the pro province of Ontario, we need to be there with our uh, direct and indirect incentives, and we've calculated our number at two and a half billion. The feds have chose a very different route, which yeah. I think is a, a good way for them to go. Uh, it's two and a half billion dollars. It will be in tax credits to Honda. Uh -huh. So that the other deals that we did, they were first adopters, early adopters. Yeah. They received the Canadian equivalent of the, the Inflation Reduction Act dollars, which was billions. That does not apply in this Honda deal. They're here because of everything else we offer in Ontario, critical minerals and the land and the the, the, yeah. the, the, the talent, all of, all of those things, the clean energy. That's why they're here. They're, it's not about the money. I, I, I did ask the president of uh, Honda this question, but I'll ask you as well, because your federal cousins, the, the Conservatives, are raising concerns again about the potential of um, temporary foreign workers because they are being used um, in a battery plant in southwest Ontario. What, what do you make of those concerns, and, and why was that not part of the agreement with Honda, even though it is, it is according to the president, their intention to hire Canadians? Yeah, look, we insist on Ontario workers. Um, we don't discuss the business contracts per se, but we're insisting on Ontario workers with respect uh, to the workers who will come in and install equipment. We, you know, I live in North Bay. I live in a mining machinery town. We make equipment that we send to Mongolia uh, here in North Bay. A lot of my great friends are gone to Mongolia for half a year to install this equipment. So the same thing here. These are short-term technical experts that will come here. We've never made a battery in Canada before, yeah. a, a lithium-ion electric vehicle battery. We've never made one here. So you need those technical experts. They're going to come in. Not only are they going to help install the equipment, but they're going to train hundreds and then thousands of the employees on how to use that equipment and then return. They're, they really are uh, short-term technical experts. Earlier this month, as you know, Ford announced it was delaying uh, the EV production at its Oakville assembly until 2027, pushing it back a couple of years. Are, there are some concerns, I think, out there that consumer adoption is lagging and that, that it is causing some companies like Ford to sort of put pause on things. What, what, are, what are your concerns around that, whether consumers are, it's the high prices, maybe not enough rebates? Like, what are your concerns about the marketplace? Well, these are multinational companies making multi-billion dollar decisions. We know that global spending last year alone in EVs was up 31 percent. There'll be hiccups along the way, of course, sure. but the trend is solidly upward. 31 percent increase last year, year over year. Um, two and a half million EVs sold in 2020. The forecast is 50 million EVs sold in 2030. So, you know, we're, we're, this is the business, the decision that we made is the business to save those 100,000 jobs and get in this business. Uh, I know you've been asked this, but I'll, I'll ask again. Obviously, your government has spoken out against the federal carbon tax increase uh, it, that is meant to obviously try and get consumers to these kinds of vehicles. Do, do, do you think that it is coherent to have that position, to be against the increase to the carbon tax, and yet uh, putting billions of dollars into a, a company that produces EVs? There are two different things. So with respect to the carbon tax, you know, here we are seeing the federal carbon tax raising the price of gasoline and putting a price on, on everything. Well, we're busy lowering gasoline by 10 cents, putting in doubling the uh, guaranteed annual income for seniors, the child care programs. I sure. mean, we're putting money back in the hands of, uh, of the consumer. With respect to, to the EVs, we've decided to invest in the workers. There really were 100,000 auto workers. The companies had no plans to make EVs before we yeah. stepped in. Yeah. The companies were just closed. They, they, were, yeah. they had no new product. Now I, they all yeah. have product. I, I get that minute. I get that, Minister, but but they are related because the carbon tax is meant to change behavior and drive people towards those electric vehicles. So so you could argue that they actually make, they fit together. Well, 85% of all vehicles made in Ontario are exported. So, you know, this is really, we're in the business of 
creating those jobs for people, not just saving the 100,000, but we'll be creating tens of thousands of new jobs. Look at Volkswagen plant. Yeah. I mean, this is a $16 million plant, a 16 million square foot plant, $7 billion. It's going to be the fourth largest building on planet Earth built right here in Ontario. This, there's a lot of jobs here at stake. Okay, well, we'll come back when you've made those other announcements and, and more details around the jobs. Minister, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, Rosemary. Enjoyed that.